Hey guys, and welcome to today's video. We are here to do a tag video. This is the eyeshadow palette tag round two. This tag was created last year by Samantha March and Allie Glines. They collaborated again. I actually found their videos while I was getting ready to film today, and I was like, you know what? This would be such a fun video to go ahead and film and put up myself. I'm pretty sure I did the, their original palette tag video, but we are here again for round two. And if you're new here, hello and welcome. My name is Kelly, and I love all things makeup and beauty. I love talking. I love makeup. I love talking about makeup. So if you like to chat about makeup too, I would love to have you subscribe and be part of the K Bella fam. But without further ado, let's talk about some eyeshadow palettes. I do also want to say in honor of Samantha March, I am wearing her merch, Unbothered. So Samantha has merch and she has a company by Samantha March. I know Allie Glines has a makeup bag company, so I'm going to have both of them tagged down below. Check them out, but let's go ahead and jump right in. Question number one was an all-time favorite eyeshadow palette. Now this one I actually changed a couple times and I had to go back with an Old Faithful. My Old Faithful is my ABH Modern Renaissance palette. This is probably old enough where I need to get rid of it. This is the original, and this has just always been a go-to palette for me. You can see I've hit pan on Tempura and Vermeer. Tempura is like my go-to, like setting my primer. Vermeer is my go-to inner corner. And then I do have a dip in Primavera in the nude shades. I pretty much just live like on this side of the palette, you know? But this is like an Old Faithful for me. I feel like recently, like, Lately, I don't use it as much as I used to, but it's still an Old Faithful. It's still something I go back to time and time again. It's still a palette that I can't bring myself to get rid of, even though it's like probably five or six years old. So, all-time fave, ABH Modern Renaissance. Then we had a new favorite eyeshadow palette, and... I had to go with this one. This is the Natasha Denona Retro Palette. This palette was a surprise to me. My best friend Smegs picked this up for me and I just fell in love with the color story. I already knew that I liked the quality of Natasha Denona's shadows, but I didn't think initially that this color story was gonna speak to me, but it really did. And this is a palette that I find myself reaching for easily. I can always create something that I love with this eyeshadow palette, whether I'm sitting down and doing my makeup in 10 minutes because I'm a mom and I have an almost three-year-old or I'm getting ready for work, or if I have time to like sit down and really get into it, I can reach for this palette. So this is definitely one that has become a staple, a favorite, and it sits front and center. I keep my eyeshadow palettes right there on that bookshelf, and this one is definitely front and center with the Modern Renaissance. They're together. In the front. Palette number three is the eyeshadow palette that you keep for the memories and I actually chose the same one that Samantha did and it's the Dose of Colors Desi X Katie Friendcation palette. Desi and Katie were, are, they're not, they're not really huge like in the YouTube beauty space anymore because they've kind of branched off and created their own companies, but they were like two of my absolute favorite YouTubers. I loved their friendship. I loved watching their friendship on social media. They did a squad tour and they came to Houston like several years ago. My husband took me. I waited in line like all day, almost didn't make it, but I got to meet them and take a quick picture with them. This is an eyeshadow palette that I never really fell in love with. I. I didn't think that it was bad quality, but the shimmers weren't my favorite. Some of them were like just a little bit more toppery. There was tons of fallout. I felt like the mattes were always super creamy and blendable, but the shimmers just didn't do it for me. So although I did use this a lot when I first got it, I don't use it anymore. And there have been so many times where I've thought, I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of it. I don't use it. And then I'm reminded that I still love Desi and Katie. You know, I got to meet them. That has a fun memory. And this was just like significant of their friendship and their bond in the makeup industry. And I just really love that. And I have some friends here that I met in the YouTube space that I talk to regularly. And you know, it just kind of shows you like makeup can bring you together. And I've even had people like offer to buy this from me. 
but I just can't because there are so many good memories with this one. Okay, so number four is an underrated eyeshadow palette, and I, I probably should have looked this up, but like I said, I was literally watching Sam's video while I was getting ready, and I was like, okay, I want to film this, but it's the Dominique Cosmetics Latte Palette, and the reason why I said I, I should have looked this up is because I think there's a chance that this might have been discontinued, or maybe it was the Latte 2. I have both of them. Either way, this was one of the first eyeshadow palettes that Kristen Dominique came out with under Dominique Cosmetics, and it took me a while to get it, but once I got my hands on it, I really, really love this eyeshadow palette. Now, I'm a neutral lover, so of course, anything neutral is going to like grab my attention, but honestly, these three shimmers are like such standouts for me. The quality is amazing, and I, I feel like I don't hear anybody talk about it anymore, but the quality of these shimmers is amazing. If you like BAM, in your face, pigment, glowing, glittery, like they're amazing. Without chunks of glitter, without fallout. I love, love, love those shimmer shades. So that really does it for me. This is a great palette where it's just quick, it's easy, I can reach for it and like automatically create a look. It's easy to travel with and I definitely think it's underrated because I don't really hear anybody talking about it, but I love it. Okay, so then we have not a favorite but can't get rid of it. And for this one, I thought about it for a minute, but I feel like I had to go with my Sigma Ambiance palette. This is a palette that I enjoy. Don't get me wrong, I like it, I think it's a nice palette, but it's not a favorite. Like, I kind of have to tell myself to use it, to remind myself to go into it. It's neutrals, the quality is great, but for whatever reason, like, I have to tell myself to use this eyeshadow palette. And at the same time, even though it like sits and collects dust every now and then, I still find that I can't get rid of it because I think it's good quality and it is neutrals and it's the only eyeshadow palette that I have from Sigma. So that's another reason why I want to hold on to it. And every time I look at it, I'm like, I really need to break this out and use it more. But for whatever reason, I just don't think of it off the top of my head. But I recently did a declutter. I considered getting rid of this because I'm trying to really only keep makeup that I'm using, but I couldn't. I couldn't bring myself to get rid of it. Favorite collaboration. This one was super easy for me to think of. I thought of it right off the top of my head. And I, I love collaborations. I love supporting other content creators, but hands down, my favorite collab has to be Sydney Grace, Mel Thompson, Tiny Marvels palette. Now, I would have said this even if Mel, Mel was still with us, but she sadly passed away last year, and luckily her videos are still on YouTube for us to watch and enjoy, so I'll definitely have Mel's channel tagged down below because if, if for some reason you're not familiar with her, like you can still watch all of her videos, but this eyeshadow palette, first of all, the quality is amazing. I am a neutral lover, but the way that they have neutrals and pops of colors in here, like I can easily like try and be a little creative and like reach for the purple or the green or go for a bright gold or do a little bit of a mauve. But then at the same time, if I'm not feeling that gutsy, I still have my browns. I still have like a neutral shimmer shade, but this shade Firebutts is an all time favorite. Like out of all of my eyeshadows, I really, really love the Firebutts shade. So this palette has for sure been a staple. It helps get my creative juices flowing, which I feel like I'm not a super creative person, but this palette really helps me step outside of my comfort zone and be a little bit more creative. So I am so sad that we lost Mel, but so thankful that we have a piece of her still in the beauty community. So then we have a 2021 favorite. And I actually did a whole ranking video, so I can link that right here if you didn't get a chance to check that out. But I wanted to talk about a palette I hadn't mentioned, and a palette that I didn't necessarily expect it to be a favorite, but it became a fast favorite, was the Vive Cosmetics Muse palette. Now, I do have the Vive Essential palette. That one disappointed me a little bit, but when I saw the color story of the Muse, I was like, you know what? I feel like I'm into these like rosy vibes right now. So I picked this up 
and I absolutely love this eyeshadow palette. The mattes are super creamy and blendable. She did reformulate her shimmer shades. I like these shimmers a lot more than the ones in the Essential palette, but then you have some unique, like, rich berry shades. I don't have anything like Mystic. I don't have anything like Regal, but I can still keep it nice and neutral. It's a very romantic eyeshadow palette, and I find myself reaching for this one a ton. I want you guys to know that I tried really hard not to duplicate eyeshadow palettes. I don't have the largest collection of YouTubers on the internet for when it comes to eyeshadow palettes, but I do have a large collection. However, I still, as much as I didn't want to repeat, I still have to repeat for this next one. And this is an eyeshadow palette that you didn't expect to love. And I had to say the Natasha Denona Retro Palette because if you follow my Pass Grabber Undecided videos, you might know that I actually said I was gonna pass on this palette. I wasn't going to pick it up. I, I knew that I loved the Natasha Denona formula, but I didn't think the color story was quite for me. It was a little bit deeper and darker. I said I was going to pass on it. People even asked me about it. I said I was going to pass on it. And then Smags picked it up. I tried hers out, fell in love with it. She picked it up for me, and I instantly fell in love, and I found myself reaching for this a ton, and I just didn't expect that. Like, I knew that I was going to love the formula. I didn't know I was going to love the color story, but I do. So here we are. Then we have an eyeshadow palette that sparks joy. And this one I also thought about for a bit because as much as I love makeup, I don't feel like I don't feel like I get attached to it so much. Like my makeup's always rotating. So trying to think of an eyeshadow palette that sparks joy, I I was like staring at my collection and I was like, I don't I don't really have one screaming out at me, but then off to the side, I caught a glimpse of my Huda Beauty Naughty Nude Palette. Now this eyeshadow palette I got two Christmases ago, and it was a gift from my husband, and he does not buy me makeup, ever. He is not really interested in makeup. He definitely is like super supportive of my YouTube and my Instagram. Like it was his idea to start all of this when I first started talking about it, but he doesn't purchase makeup for me. And I want to say this might have been one of the first times, if not the actual first time that he ever purchased makeup, like without me being with him. So when I look at this, I think of that. And also at the time, you know, he was so excited to give this to me because Christmas of 2020, when he did give this to me, I had COVID and I tested positive first before him and our daughter. And so I was quarantining away from them. And he like went out, got me a gift card, picked up this palette for me, made a big deal of like still trying to celebrate Christmas, even though I was locked away in a bedroom and I did not want anything to do with Christmas. And, and so when I look at this, it just, it brings me joy. It makes me happy. And to think about like the thought that he put into this, it's just really, really sweet. So this has to be the palette that sparks joy. Okay, also, I don't know if you guys can see my baby hairs, but like, this is unreal. People talk about postpartum hair loss, but this is like, my daughter's almost three and I'm still struggling. Okay, we have two more left. The next one is the newest palette in my collection, and I actually don't have it yet. I've ordered it, but it's not here, and I did pick up the Pat McGrath Bridgerton Eyeshadow Palette. I can't remember the name of it, but you know, it's in the Pat McGrath collection. I picked up the eyeshadow palette. Initially, I thought that I wouldn't really pick anything up, but then I started seeing people's reviews and it looked beautiful and the packaging is amazing and I enjoy Bridgerton. So I actually did go ahead and bite the bullet. I know it's coming to Sephora on January 26th, which I'm not sure what day this is going up, but it's probably around that time that the Pat McGrath Bridgerton palette is coming to Sephora. But before it came to Sephora, they restocked on the Pat McGrath website. And with the code Bridgerton10, you could get 10% off. So that's what I did. So I'm expecting that palette. It will be here soon. I hope. And the last category or question is the first eyeshadow palette that you used in 2022 and it was actually a Christmas gift from my best friend Smegs. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Instant Eye Palette Smoky Eyes Forever. This was their holiday palette. This is what 
the beautiful eyeshadow palette looks like right here. You can see that it's nice and neutral with pops of color, but then you have like little trios set up. So I have been using this. I have been enjoying it. I wasn't sure if I was going to do like a full dedicated video to it or not. So if that's something you want to see, go ahead and let me know. But this is the palette that I wore first in 2022. But that is going to do it for this video. Thank you so much to Samantha and Allie for coming up with this fun tag video and inviting other people to join in the fun. I would love to know some of your favorites down below. If you did enjoy this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you are a content creator and you filmed this video as well, please let me know in the comments down below so I can go and check it out. I love a good tag video. But otherwise, that's going to do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.